Okay, so everyone knows about the Rohingya issue and there are about like 1.3 million Rohingyas in Bangladesh and the way it seems they're here to stay because in their homeland a lot of messed up things have happened to them. Mass genocide, you could say, ethnic cleansing, mass rapes, like just about every human right human rights violation you can name it has happened to them and it doesn't look like their situation is going to improve to yeah, i blame even and condemn martial law the killings that are happening the ethnic cleansing the massacre of the people there the people of the rakhine state is happening majorly due to the military of myanmar who have been uh, con in control of the country for decades and yeah, um, yeah a lot of people are dying they're being tortured rapes uh, and many other human right, uh, rights violation crimes are happening in Myanmar and the people don't have any other choice but to leave their homeland and flood into their neighboring countries in which includes Bangladesh as well so yeah suck it. that is I mean, yeah, India as well. like they're also going into oh. India and the Bangladesh. Yeah. No, but most of the a, 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 a few countries didn't let them enter, but Bangladesh came in support, first yeah. of all. So we should actually be proud of that fact. And secondly, I believe it's very ironic the, that the thing happening in Myanmar, I'll just mm -hmm. explain why I feel it's ironic because it said that Buddhism is a religion of peace only. They don't fight, they non violence. That's what we do. Yeah? Non violence. Non-violent, exactly. But mm -hmm. they are the ones who are promoting violence. No, I won't say on a large scale. I would say it could be on a world scale because every the whole world saw it. The way they were killing the people. So, so just because the, because of the fact that they're indigenous people, they are being killed on a large scale. Not only killed, rape and many more pro and many more things. So it was a, I would say it was a full-scale torture that was happening. Yeah, and one thing is like the government justifies it by claiming that they're Bangladeshi, which isn't true. They have been exactly there for centuries. They are completely different ethnicity. They they don't. Yeah. They're not they're I would like to, and I would like to add to that. Even if they, even if they were not locals, even if they are not Mayan uh, people of Myanmar of their actual of their you know majority lineage. Why would you even if they were just normal bang Bengalis? Why would, why would you discriminate them? against them like that? They were born oh. there. They have been living there for centuries. Exactly. exactly. And even if they weren't, even if they weren't, that doesn't give the government the right to carry out such hideous practices on them. I would not say only government. Like no one is allowed to kill a person just because they feel they're not from their nationality or something. Yeah. You could you could have you could have simply asked them, Jay, you don't you don't you know, they could have many non violent process, I would say. Rather than just killing oh. them on like um, on this yeah, for, for example in Bangladesh, a lot of Bangladesh uh, has redeemed this as an exaggeration. Like the international community has um ask them questions regarding this that why is this happening in your country mass genocide they've and just they're like, denying you know, it and they're denying it to them it's just exaggeration of facts like nothing of that sort is happening not they're, exaggeration. they're minor, is happening. Um, criminal activity it's not a genocide it's a criminal activity going on bro i think the Myanmar government is living in a delusion yeah, like there's so much propaganda. They claim that all, all of the things in the media are like lies made by Bangladeshis and that they claim that Rohingyas are Bangladeshis okay. even though they're like a question. ethnicity with simple. like a different language and they don't even use the Bengali alphabet. They use like the exactly. Arabic so one simple, Like w One simple question is that if it was made up, it was not true. Why did the UN come in support of Bangladesh and the and the and the Rohingyas? Why are the UN supporting them without any reason, without any evidence? Yeah. yeah, and also it's like I remember one time, uh um there was like this famous thing. Uh Aung San Suu Kyi, who was the um, um state uh counselor, basically in informally she was the person in charge. Her yeah. party controlled Myanmar, and she claimed that uh, fifty percent of the Muslim villages, like Rohingyas, are majority Muslim, as everyone knows, are intact. Yeah. 
And this person, and this expert, I forgot his name, responded by saying, what do you mean 50%? That just means that 50% of the Muslim villages are gone and are destroyed. Is that a good thing? So you are just being killed because of a religion. And how is that right? Yeah, that isn't it's right. And it's, I guess Buddhism. Buddhism is the religion of non-violence. Oh, and it is one more the, ironic the thing. Religion. She even won the Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, for her fight against uh, uh, Burmese military. And guys, but, that was during the 90s, if you all go back. Yeah, like, during like, yeah, the military is which yeah. is back again. Exactly. And listen, guys, we should mm -hmm. also remember that this hasn't been going on since recently. Like, it only came into the limelight in August of 2017 because that's when um, the violence became, like, really widespread. However, this has been hap going on since 1962 or, or even before that. But in 1962, Basically, she was awarded martial law. For peace in the 90s. Yeah, in 1962. Well, since the independence yeah. of Myanmar. From the British yeah. Empire. Yeah, the military rule began in Myanmar, uh, in Myanmar, and since then the the rights of the Rakhine population of the Rohingya population, I mean, has been were gradually being taken away in 1982. I mean, they, they aren't granted rights. They aren't considered to be yeah. citizens. And, and in that, yeah, and it's unfair because it's just because of the race and religion. Whereas in a country, it should be equal. Exactly. Also, bro, uh, one thing which was very nice, I would say, is despite all this obsession and all these problems, they never said that we want independence and give us independence. They never did that. This is they never said, That's they... all they want. They want to be treated like citizens because they exactly. are. Yeah. They've been living there for centuries. And, and it's, it's like, yeah, and it's like they have been around for centuries. Like, Guys, we must consider the fact is... that. Akan was like a an independent kingdom in the yeah. medieval medieval yeah. century. There was, like they never... between, there was constant warfare between the Bengal Sultanate and the Ara Arakan kingdom. And and one more thing, their um their loss of citizenship, their lack of rights was actually like legalized in 1982 when a law was passed where 135 at national ethnic groups were identified, <clears throat> the Rohingya weren't one of them. One thing that people overlook is like in Myanmar, there, there are a lot of separatist movements because a lot of races aren't, aren't given due rights and they're discriminated against for, and there's why, there, uh, there are a lot of separatist movements because of it. And just the yeah, so they have these atrocities on other races as well, just on a smaller scale. Okay, so guys, um, remember, remember yeah. the time where the actual mass genocide was happening in Myanmar and all? And, yeah, um, two, three years ago. Two, three years ago. Seventeen. Right. Four, five mm -hmm. years ago. Oh, yeah. oh damn, it's yeah. been a long time, huh? Yeah, man, COVID, COVID fucked us all over, but either ways, yeah, yeah, my memory is fun. I saw yeah. Yeah, yeah, honestly. There's one video of a little child being like tortured. Wait, where did you see aforementioned video? The aforementioned video it was all over I, Facebook, it was everywhere. I cannot link the sources per se. That's not what I'm saying. No one should be, no one should have to see that. Yeah. Guys, I've seen see newborn babies kept away from their mothers and thrown away. He's a fucking crackhead. He's gonna watch it. You know him. <laughs> I have my sources, but um, even hey, go on. a sadistic person, that was kind of gruesome to watch. Um, if Nihal said that, yeah, not going in like guns blazing and just saying, like, get the fuck out of our country. That was a bad choice. I agree. But look at the latter side. It would be the same outcome, even if they were non violent uh, and very uh, much in a diplomatic manner. Think of, think of it. Um, remember, uh, think of this. I come to your house and just like, yo, 
I'm the talent now. Just go out. Uh, honestly, that would honestly that would be the best allegory to describe the Israel-Palestine situation. Okay, yeah, true, but still, uh, you <laughs> the same true. thing. But okay, so Zakibu, you get what I'm saying, right? Even 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 though I wasn't violent with you, you would still be like, hold up, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you kicking me out so early? What Kashyap is trying to say is that. It's messed up how they are being forced to move out of their own homes, which their ancestors lived in, just because the no, men, have military them. government doesn't consider them to be Myanmar's citizens, just because they're Muslim and uh, Rohingya. Actually, there's this other reason that the August 2017 persecution was in response to Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army attacks on Myanmar border posts. I mean, that's about hilarious. That, about that, about that. It's like, the reason for that is that, that our, the reason why some Rohingyas arm themselves is because the government just keeps on attacking them. So naturally, some of them are going to arm themselves. And, but the know, army claims that they started in so, retaliation, they killed those salvation yeah. people, like, you oh. know, those Rohingyas were armed. Oh, quite John, I'm going to say that villages district where they right now. They were armed because the government keeps on attacking their people. So naturally, some of the some of the population is naturally going to make their own uh, militias in order because they think that they're that defending themselves. So, but but I would say it was rather more of a self defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the government yeah, claims that they were the ones who started terrorism in the country. No, I mean, it's a response to the government's actions. I but mean, the government says it's the other way around. <laughs> it's funny. I mean, the government pretends, the military government of Myanmar pretends that uh, pretends that all these uh, minorities are just rebellious and ungrateful, but that's bro, not see, true. You, they aren't bro, giving their rights. You, if you commit a crime, you're going to have to cover up for it. So that, so that was the excuse they used to cover up for their crime, for the genocide. And bro, they're not even recognized. Achha, guys, the scenario group. Like, yeah, so this Rohingya person is like plowing in his field and out of nowhere, the military truck shows up and starts shooting at his family. That's what happened. There's no, no terrorism going on here. The military started it. Um, the Myanmar government, uh, they recently, due to like the protests, everyone knows what's happening in Myanmar. For those who don't know, um, Aung San Suu Kyi, her party won the last election. So the, the military removed her and jailed her. And in response to that, there have been mass protests. And in there response to those mass protests, there have been even more fucking human rights violations by the Burmese military government. Yeah, they need a reason to, like, you know, kill people. Like, you know, they're going to excuse it for, like, yeah, they were, like, being rebellious. They were causing... Yeah, they need a reason. It's like they just kill some people to make an example of them. By the way, so I would like to just intervene here to share an interview. And it, this interview was published on the Sunday Morning Herald. It's an Australian newspaper. So yeah. they, they interviewed Interview this... Between whom? Uh, they interviewed this uh, 40-year-old Rohingya woman who survived the Tula Toli massacre. Uh, for those who don't know, it was the, like the first major massacre that happened in August 2017 where all of the houses were burned in the in the Tula Toli region of Rakhine, of Rakhine province. So, yeah. They, they interviewed they interviewed this woman who survived and made it into Bangladesh. She said that every night she sees in her nightmares a soldier pulling this kind of gory so trigger warning. Every night she sees in her nightmares a soldier pulling her three-month-old baby from her lap, slashing open his stomach. Her, her, her father put a log of wood in his mouth, then they slit his throat. He killed seven of her children, two of her, uh, two of her, uh, her husband, two of his brothers, and 60, 60 of her relatives who lived nearby, like who, who were, they were all neighbors. There you go. That is... I was just trying to say that, that that military, so like that soldier took out like the intestines of a kid, like, you know, 
Like slash and Robin he, is and he did way more than that. Let's not get too graphic exactly. here. Just because it, it might trigger it's some gonna, people. So we've how, already gone let's into just, graphic. Let's just talk about how hateful the sword the soldier must have been. He didn't view them as people, he just viewed it, viewed them as like cockroaches. So the problem experience. problem was that's the way they were taught. They, they were being said, Jedi, they should not kill them, kill them, kill them, kill them. Yeah, so, they were being taught that, oh, they're ba- Bangladeshis, they're Muslims, and they're going to breed like rabbits and take over Myanmar. That's their taking exactly. process. I want to no, say one thing. It's not the soldier's fault. It's more of the it's more of the people in power who are responsible. No, no, no. I don't agree to that. Why is it not the soldier's fault? You might be given orders, but you have the right to disobey. I disagree with dancing. Simply. Exactly. It's about because the concept. Even if you're it's a about soldier, your it's about your morale. You're doing something wrong. You can rebel. Like at most, you're gonna lose your military position. Exactly, That's it. bro. I believe the soldiers are the person. They're supposed to protect us, and they're the ones who are killing them. Look, yeah. the morale, the principles, like, soldiers no. are, so should be higher than any normal person. So just I because you've been that. given the, the shishko today, just because you've been given the order to kill mm-hmm. someone. That to unarmed, not even armed, unarmed, and you're killing them just because of your order. You obviously have the right to say, No, I won't kill someone without any reason. They were not, yeah, even at all. most you're gonna be a court martial. Okay, exactly. No, no, I, I, interject. Maybe if the solo yeah, was given so, order, he could have he could have hit them, not hit, I would say, you know, inter- interrogate them or do something else. Why kill and that way in that manner? Yeah, and I mean, that shows that he enjoyed it exactly. So, yeah, so I'm saying the soldier to wasn't at fault is completely baseless, I believe. Okay, so I'm uh, not going to talk about this particular soldier that uh, the woman is describing here because that yeah, was cool. a sadistic ass motherfucker. I would agree with you that. As of the bitch. Okay, so that too. Uh, okay. But usually, uh, what you said, you know, that um, in a soldier's conscience, he has the right to reject an order if it means maybe. He might get a it's, slap on it's a human rights violation. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. um, I don't know if you guys know about this much, but in the military, shit doesn't work like that. Depends on m- which ever, military. Have you ever seen what kind of punishments they give you in militaries? Bro, even then, it's like the thing that we were talking about is that he obviously enjoyed it. Yeah, okay, okay. Now I'm going to explain why this soldier enjoyed it. And actually, Nihal gave me gave the answer to this already. It's because he was taught this. Okay, Bhabe, nurture kore, I mean, kore, kore, he said the military he's, propaganda. He's, he's, yeah, military propaganda has been instilled in them from a young age. And who instills this propaganda? You tell me. The, the government, government and the military. I'm like, to the military, they say, hey, Bhabe. This was drilled into their head from since they were this much. That's why exactly. and the even, even, even for the ones who were even for the ones who weren't radicalized as kids, getting into the military, that there these ideas were drilled, drilled exactly. into their yeah. heads. Bro, it's, it's just my question. Like I, I have a question is that like when you are killing them and you know torturing them, like though their heart shiver corner, didn't your hand shiver like innocent fucking no, people? No, people. No, I don't no, think no, 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 no. I would have hands shiver I'll doing stop. something you enjoy. I mean he was enjoying it. That was the highlight of this year. But for man, like Sake, think of it in a way, Jay. You are just you know, um, example, okay. You are walking on your field in a village and somebody out of nowhere comes in and kills your whole family in front of your eyes and you can't do anything. You're just, you're just watching it because you have no power, no support. Even if, And you know, yeah, you know you're going to be next. And these and he are are very They're trained fact. killers. They don't just do this to the Rohingyas. They do this in other uh, regions as well where insurgent groups are. Okay. Well, you know, if it was something like... Like... You can like shoot a person and kill him, like, but you in order to like you know slash through the stomach, take out the guts, like you need something else. Like you cannot just do that. Like it's it's something just different. there's no remorse. It's a Bro, complete I believe, lack. You must abide in the soldier, like you know the humanity. Bro, I believe those people were just they don't have ethics. 
ethics, bro, bro, look, bro. Let me just that's an understatement. Okay. Let me just exactly. amplify that no. for you real quick. Let me, I, that, I was that. gonna say, I was gonna say they are animals, but no, you know, saying oh, no, that no, 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 insulting animals. Animals actually have are better. Yeah, I mean, and animals, bro, animals, animals have a animals class really in terms of hunting. They they only take out intestines if they need to eat it for survival. It's like these people, a jarai shop catch kutta se. These people, they have, they are, they psychologically do not have any human empathy, any remorse, any that the feeling that I we disagree. get. They have oh. empathy for people, for people on, on their on, for their own people. Yeah, their but, own but people. That, that, that's not wrong. Yeah, yes, that's, that's not my point. Like if a if right. were, if it was someone from a different race, they would feel remorse. But the Rohingyas, they 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 didn't view them as humans. Eventually, after all this, you know, massacre, genocide, they were forced to leave their own motherland and go to different countries for seeking help. And Bangladesh was one of the very first countries to reach out to help them. And since then, they are the only country. Uh, yeah, I was just about to say, Asia. in a lot of ways, we're the only countries who are actually doing something like material. I'm not actually, and, we're, we're actually doing something physical, like we're actually giving them space to live. And a lot of them have settled quite comfortably. If it will, in maybe not the best of living conditions, but it's definitely much better than I would say from relocating them into like these islands with like government housing, and those uh, places are actually good. It's yeah, for them, yeah. You know, now, but first of all, when they came in, it, you know, Bangladesh also was very new for the, for for us to you know to deal with these things. It had yeah, it had afraid. happened. It had happened. And before as well, but those times the people were in small numbers. But this time, mm-hmm. almost one point three million people million. entered at once. At once, no, through like a narrow once. border. Yeah, yeah, like we first AJ, the Tula Tuli massacre. We talk for maybe two or three lakh people. Yeah, yeah. We, we just we time it. For us, that's the problem. And now, children, not adults. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just give you a statistic. I'll just give you a statistic. We have an almost fifty-two percent of the women, the people who entered were women mostly. Fifty-two percent. So fifty-two percent of the people were women, and a lot of these women were actually raped and were pregnant. A lot of them were pregnant. There would be men, but they were all killed. And you know the thing is, if you um. Listen to like the Rohingya refugee talk. They don't. They don't want to stay in Bangladesh. They still want to return to their homeland exactly. because it's because it's their land. Yeah, it's part of your identity. You, you do not choose your homeland. It's just what you are. So it's yeah. a blind. Also, you know, uh, the Rohingyas. I would say at first it was very difficult. For example, there was no proper sanitation, not proper living places. They were basically settled on. On like, there aren't that many translators language the barrier, yeah. language. exactly now no, no, no. i believe the problem which has risen is is since covid i feel it's more serious now why is that because you know Sakit, what happened is that if i give you this statistic that people literally some of the people had washrooms to go and clean their hands and wash their hands and mm-hmm. wash up but there were actually places in the in those camps where they kind of punish supply in I. Wait, wait. So you were trying to say like there was no water supply in some of those washrooms and Yeah. So basically you know, they had to go from one place to another to get the water. So that even, you know, increased the rate of COVID, first of all. Yeah, Secondly, I believe there would be the problems. vaccination. The vaccination because they don't have the ident- they don't have the nationality. So oh, their vaccine dawa is gonna be very, very difficult. I mean there have been initiatives, but naturally uh the general citizens are gonna be preferred. But one yeah. thing which are government one point five million people just swarming in. Our government is doing a lot and it's a very difficult yeah. job to you know, give everyone identification. You know, Saki, what's the best part? Uh, because they were struggling in Cox's Bazaar, they were shifted to a whole new place now recently, right? Uh, yeah, what was it? Um, ba- Basun Chor. Yeah, Basun Chor. So, in there, you know, they were saying that they actually feel they're living in better conditions. 
quite yeah, kind I've of. I've seen videos of that place. It looks really exactly. good. Exactly, it's, it's very ah, nice. And you know, I I was just very very proud of our government because the way they are working, it's just massive. Yeah. And also, at first, do you remember we did not even have foreign support? No, no aids coming in, no release program coming in, no donation. The government did it on yeah, their own. Initially, it, initially, yeah, initially, initially, initial shock. Yeah. Initially, we used. So I would say it was almost for the first two years. I would say it was like this, or one and a half year. There was your payment, yeah. baby. But then uh, NGOs came in and we got yeah. support. We got also, did you see the government at support. first before the donations came in? The government provided the services on their own. Yeah, so that's something we should actually appreciate and be proud of. We have this emotional attachment to these people because. We kind of ourselves have to go through a similar situation at a point, and we also have and to leave our home well. and go to India. And, you know, India showed us great hospitality, took up, look up, looked after us, and we. And have the the well. Yeah, so we have that thing in us because we know how it feels. And when these people were being massacred, had to leave their homelands, we couldn't stop ourselves from giving them, uh, like the support that we could, like. It's not like we have a lot, but we did give them a lot, like to an extent. We it's are not taking an entirely, yeah. It's not an entirely unfamiliar situation for us Bangladeshis. That's what Rafa is trying yeah, to say. At the end of the day, so you know, we have that sympathy towards them. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. Also, guys. Also, another thing to consider is that. Even then, there there's still violence because in newspapers and in the news, apparently our border guard, border guard Bangladesh, they along like the narrow uh, Bangladesh Myanmar border, they got, while inspecting the border, they constantly hear noises of like fires burning, of military movement and soldiers increasing like they it's actually messed up because this indicates that also guys uh do you remember we almost went on a war with myanmar at that point oh yeah like it was like almost imminent because like myanmar was just completely re refusing to take the refugees back and actually give them they still yeah. are still are i mean yeah, yeah they still are but yeah, guys, you, have after, to you have to consider that they put they increased their military presence along our border. That's a security threat to us. That is also, not an act of war. That is a preparation to war. Yeah, I mean, theoretically, they could uh, invade. And the thing is, our second biggest city is just along the border. So theoretically, we need to protect ourselves. But basically, they were threatening our sovereignty. So, like, you know, deploying sovereignty, troops on the border. They were, they were might threatening have our sovereignty. They were challenging our position but, in the region. Do you guys know, like, three weeks ago, there was, like, a, sh a massive fuck ton of oh, fire yeah. there? And there was a fire, a fire, like, a month before that. Yeah, like, holy shit. Yeah, hey, like the situation is not getting any better. Yeah, it's because it's super crowded. Like if you mess up one, uh, I don't know, gas line, then a lot of uh, houses get, I mean, it's houses, the right A lot of houses there. are going to get like temporary destroyed. shelters catch fire. Yeah, yeah. these are 5,000 just... people. 5,000 people just out of the street again. Ajay, but you're trying to sandwich many people into a very small compartment and at times risky things may happen, like in accidents might take place because... Yeah, obviously. Yeah, it's so that's pretty really obvious. I'll just say that the Rohingya camps are already overpopulated, by the way. So imagine how mm -hmm. bad the situation got because of the fire. So it was yeah, like... And those shelters would will have to be rebuilt. Exactly. Yeah, and it's like it's like there's a very high birth rate amongst these refugees. I mean, they're poor; they don't have access to birth control care, hobby. So, like, like, so like, but like, yeah. there's a lot. Also, of, guys, a lot of have you thought who, about like, a few more points? With I thought I don't I don't know. Uh, for example, is first of all they are here; they're not getting an, any education. First of all, second of that's all, not, that's not entirely true. Our government as has actually collaborated with the UN to teach Rohingya kids under the Burmese curriculum. They're um, they aren't taught Bangla. They're taught uh, so that's under English and the Burmese language. 
which I didn't know that. But but have you seen one thing? Uh, the thing Sakib just said that the government, Bangladesh government, is are actually teaching them their culture. So which yeah, is obviously. very, what's that word? Yeah. It's it's, very, very, uh, it's, it's it's a really good gesture, Arki. Exactly, I would say an excellent gesture. Uh, like we are we are teaching them so that they can go back into their country and become uh, rightful citizens of Myanmar once again. We are not uh, okay. Citizens. One thing I, I think I should have said again, but I would like to add is you yeah. know many of the Rohingyas who entered our countries, some of them actually belong to aristocratic families who were well to do educated. Even they were sent out. Yeah, they were killed. Yeah, bro. So it, yeah, like. It, they didn't differentiate between who was wealthy and who was poor. They were just so. Out so of the basically, country. they just hated the race. They just wanted yeah. to finish them, and that's just disgusting. Yeah, okay, I don't now, even get the point. Know. Okay, can mm-hmm. we talk about the point okay. where their prominent leader, like four months ago, was murdered? It was like yeah, shot yeah. dead. Mm-hmm. Like, By- yeah, he was a shot dead and it was pretty controversial, but I didn't get what happened. Could you um, get some light on it? I don't know as much of it because the coverage of it was actually pretty not as not as much. But, yeah, I know. It was super but, vague. But this dude was like really important to these people. He was the he was the only one who was fighting for their rights to go back to the country by go, himself going to the like glo, going to a global stage and asking for other countries to let them have what they yeah. want. Like he's Bro, the main contributor so and he's like contributing himself to like yeah, for them. He's the oh, one talking oh, right. to government. Yeah. He's the one talking to yeah. the international governments and over that. He was, he was basically the chair of the Arakan Rohingya Society for Peace yeah. and Human Rights. He was yeah. shot and killed by an unidentified gunmen in the Kukulong camp in Cox's Bazaar. Yeah. Simple, simple thing. He was one of the major, a major person who could take them back to Myanmar, right? So, came to Mozart, I would just say, Samajdar ko ishara kafi. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, it is... I mean, the answer is obvious. I'm not obvious, obvious exactly. But who better? Also, guys, from us, you know, we were talking. Also, guys, we should also talk about the few problems that the Rohingyas have caused to caused us. Although I, mean, I want to say they're going to be caused. I mean, we we are a relatively poor country. We're at most lower middle income, and supporting yeah, we, 1.3 extra million people is. It's very yes, difficult. It's a huge huge. But way. yet we are doing it, but still it's difficult. Also, you know, so, uh, do you guys know that uh, Rohingya was caught with 8 lakh pills of Yaba by a police oh officer? Shit. Uh, I mean, uh, guys, just in general, Myanmar is known, known for drugs. The, the entirety of Southeast and South Asia for being a hub for like drug traffickers and a lot of our pills, like Yaba, comes from Myanmar. And and, and the and thing is, hello? these Rohingya families... Hey, you're audible. Go on. Yeah, and the thing is, these Rohingya people, a lot of them are like... Uh, I mean, let's be honest, they have no possessions, they're poor, and they're desperate, and traffickers might also, naturally also use them as... So my... As potential customers? Uh, also, to the last oh, point, I would like to one more thing. Uh, you know, also recently, uh, the police captured fifty-three meth, uh, meth, what this methamphetamine, methamphetamine pe- pills, and there were three hundred suspects. Out that's basically meth. meth. That that's the yeah. full form of meth. Yeah. So there were uh, so they got fifty-three million pills. Hmm. Can you imagine oh, the number? And three hundred suspects were caught, out of which forty were from the Rohingya camps. With like with all of the influx of the refugees, it's easy. It's very easy to just disguise as some poor dude and you know, uh, keep a sack of drugs in your sack in like your back pocket or something, and just or be like, oh, I'm a John Rohingya. I'm a John Rohingya. I'm desperate. Please, I'm like a camper. Like smuggling. Oh, because obviously, you have to say that the criminals, criminals are going to take advantage of this. Yeah, the yeah exactly. So it's, it's basically the people who are the criminals. They are the ones who it's basically yeah. the people of our country who are trying to, you know, like, disguise themselves 
and get them caught. So it's eventually re- ruining the reputation of the Rohingya. So already the people who are suffering, we are making them even more suffer. And, mm-hmm. and it 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 propagates racism. Exactly. Yes. But rec- but recently, just one more point is mm-hmm. that now the government are actually securing the camps so that no people can invade and you know cause them problems. Yeah, security is improving. And another thing is because of the Rohingyas, um, you know, like our national ID card and like um, official document verifications have become even more. It stricter. takes a lot of trouble. Yeah, because a lot of Rohingyas they uh, they have run away from accept, the camps. Yeah, they eventually accept that in Myanmar they have no future because of obvious reasons. So a lot of them try to get citizenship. Honestly, guys, the future for the Rohingya people looks dark because of geopolitics i mean myanmar or although they aren't relatively strong diplomatically they, they're backed by china and even india so and those are the two biggest regional powers so naturally a small country like bangladesh cannot do anything we are trying so- to get them to you know take their own people back but it's difficult and and honestly i don't see the rohingya people returning and even if they're bitter, acha, acha, guys, they guys, as, as, we, as we mentioned earlier, that Bangladesh is not that rich of a country. We are striving towards our towards development and a better infrastructural situation. We have improved and we have shown humanity brought in these people who were being tortured in their homeland. But I don't think it's a sustainable situation that we can like, you know, think long term and keep them forever because like you know it's taking a toll on us like eventually we will struggle yeah. to like you know yeah it is taking even, a toll on us. even if we do struggle to um provide for them we cannot kick innocent people out and send them back to a place unless their security has been um verified until it has been isn't verified. showing any uh, response and they uh, according to me don't have an attitude of taking them back because they never wanted them in the first they, place they're claiming that they want uh, to they want our government to make a list of the people who are there so i feel like it's uh, just a bureaucratic that, that is just a strategy to delay the delay the sending yeah. back of the refugees because that is going to take a long time and even in the un we cannot do anything because as i as we have mentioned countless times we aren't that rich or powerful or like i mean influential diplomatic I, so. I mean yeah to- but like yeah, so we cannot, we cannot, we cannot force Myanmar to do anything because Myanmar is strategically important for both India, China, and those are the two biggest regional powers in like the neighborhood. Yeah, and also, but like, but like, I don't fully agree that we can't do anything in the UN. Like, I'm bully. I'm talking bully. If we could get the support of uh, major countries like the UK, the US, Turkey, Turkey, a lot of Turkish, um. A lot of Turkish organizations, NGOs are, are already on ground in Bangladesh. They're and, helping us out. And also and, uh, U- the European Union. There have been yeah. a lot of like, yeah, so like European NGOs. So like they could support us in like the UN General Assembly. And hence we could possibly put at least a certain extent of international pressure on, on Myanmar to hopefully take back the refugees. So like there, not all hope is lost, but like it's not going to be an easy road. Proceed. The help is coming. Also, the UN sec- uh, secretary is in our support. I think recently, which Naturally, I found out. he's in the support. He, the UN, he even supports. Uh, he, you know, guys, he even quoted and... this line. He yeah. even quoted just genocide begins with the killing of one man, not for what he has done, but for what, but because of the person who he is, for his identity. Hmm. Yeah. Also, you know, uh, you know, Bangladesh, you know, the Manubikota board, which is Bangladesh, bole, is very high. And that's the only reason we know we are going to struggle in the future. There is no doubt yet we are supporting them. Yeah. And also, don't you think it's funny that in Europe, uh, for example, during like the Syrian refugee crisis, a lot of European countries were, uh, you know, angry and refused to take refugees 
like small amounts Despite of refugees. Despite the fact they're very well developed. Yeah, and bro, they could easily like support 1. like one point three million refugees. Bro, these the European countries could easily support at least like five hundred thousand refugees. At least, also maybe five hundred a million. At a least, million. yeah, also, at least a guys, million. The large. One. Also, guys, one more thing: the European countries, uh, quite a few of them are already underpopulated. By the way. And yeah. we are overpopulated, yet we are supporting. And despite being underpopulated, the country didn't support them at that point. Honestly, I'm really proud that even exactly. in a world where a lot of well, rich European countries whine a shit ton about having to take refugees, we just randomly took in like 1.3 million people and probably more because it's hard to, you know, It's hard to keep count. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and they're also doing gonna a bad give job. birth, and they're gonna pop up, you know, give birth. So that's gonna increase. So we can basically say that the developed countries data quote the Bangladesh or Korea first without backing at first. I know we've repeated this quite a few times, but the reason that we are repeating this is because it's actually a very big thing. Like when when all of these rich Easter, all of these rich European countries are refusing to take just a few hundred, maybe or a few thousand refugees. We, a lot of the time, just like 20, 30,000 refugees. Yeah, yeah and, and like we're handling so, in millions at this point. Yeah. That's yeah. why we have been doing it. And for, so and for the phenomenal, moment, I would say. And at the moment, like for now, the situation is not too bad. Like they're mostly under control, mm. you know, bar a few mishaps maybe. But but that's bound to happen. I mean, how and many people... to get better. I mean, we're making more uh, official... Um, housing projects and, for and, the Rohingyas. and on top of that there's a there are a lot of ngos like a lot of ngos who are actually yeah. coming forward to help uh national ngos international ngos a lot of a lot of um organizations led by the youth of this country so it's you know as a nation as a whole we can be proud of what we've done so far and we can only be optimistic that you know the future was something good for the for the Rohingya people I'll be honest, I personally am really super pessimistic about your chances. In, I mean, I get uh, it. I mean, I get it. It's, it's... Myanmar. So but, am I. So am I. I get it. overall, let's just hope for the best. And exactly, yeah. I feel like you've said everything that has that uh, that was needed to be said. So uh, let's just end this and... Let's just hope for the best. That's yeah, all I can yeah. say. And, th- and thank you to everyone that has watched this far. Um, exactly, yeah. yeah. Thank you so thank much you. for watching and bearing and with us. We know we have assholes like Kasha, Prafa, Tanzim, <laughs> and, and Sakit is all of us, sweetheart. We are keeping so, this here. Yeah. Of course we are. And okay. also, if, if we have missed something, which we have probably missed because the Myanmar government treats Rohingya, Rohingya's like shit. And there's a lot of things we can't that. say publicly. Exactly. 